Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to problem C from Code Forces Round 478 entitled Valhalla Siege. The problem states Ivar the Boneless is a great leader. He is trying to capture Kattegat from Ligurtha. The war has begun and wave after wave of Ivar's warriors are falling in battle. Ivar has N warriors. He places them on a straight line in front of the main gate in a way that the Ith warrior stands right after the I minus oneth warrior, warrior. The first warrior leads the attack. Each attacker can take up to A arrows before he falls to the ground where AI is the Ith warrior's strength. Ligurtha orders her warriors to shoot KI arrows during the Ith minute. The arrows one by one hit the first still standing warrior. After all Ivor's warriors fall and all the currently flying arrows fly by, Thor smashes his hammer and all Ivor's warriors get their previous strengths back and stand up to fight again. In other words, if all warriors die in minute T, they all will be standing to fight at the end of minute T. The battle will last for Q minutes. After each minute, you should tell Ivar what is the number of his warriors standing. And note that the constraints for this problem, N and Q, the number of warriors and the number of turns is going to be less or in between 1 and 200,000. Uh, the strength of each warrior can be up to 10 to the 9, and the number of arrows unleashed in each turn is going to be up to 10 to the 14th. So let's take a look at one of the examples that uh, Code Force has provided us with. So in this example, we have uh, the following input. So uh, five represents the number of warriors. The second five represents the number of turns. And for each turn, we're given the number of arrows that are going to be unleashed. And uh, then that's what these numbers represent underneath. So the visualization of this is the following. So we've got our castle that uh, the Ivar, the Bonelesses warriors are trying to capture. And they're taking arrows and dying uh, each turn. So each of the warriors has the following strengths. And uh, the, I guess, uh, battle will happen as follows. So each turn, there'll be a certain number of arrows that are unleashed. So on the first turn, we have three arrows. So so one by one these arrows uh, will be fired and as soon as uh, it's fired it will hit the first still standing warrior and this warrior will take damage until uh, his health is diminished to zero so uh, on the first turn we have three arrows so that means that uh, after the first arrows unleash the first warrior will will fall then we have two arrows left and these two arrows will uh, be able to kill off the second warrior and so at this point our turns over because we have zero arrows left and then we have to output the remaining uh, warrior standing so at this point it'll be three so we'll, we'll add this three uh, to our first output and then we move to our next turn we've got 10 arrows here and so we're just going to do the same thing so 10 arrows will be enough to uh, kill off the remaining three uh, warriors and then for the remainder of the turn the arrows will just fly by and at this point uh, Thor shows up he smashes his hammer and uh, then all the warriors are standing again so at the end of this turn we'll be back to five warriors and then we move on to our next turn uh, our third turn where we have one arrow this will make the first warrior fall uh, and then we'll have uh, four warriors standing at that point so that'll be our next output then we move to our next turn four we have one arrow again and this won't be enough to kill off our first uh, still standing warrior so this will just diminish his health to one and our turn will be over so we'll output four again and then on our final turn we also have one arrow and uh, this will be able to make uh, the first still standing warrior fall. So then we'll output three at this point. So this is the gist of the problem. Um, and so if you were to just uh, implement a naive algorithm sort of that did what we just did, uh, it would time out due to the constraints of the problem. So note that uh, the number of arrows can be all the way up to 10 to the 14th. Uh, which is not is going to be too much for us to just iterative, iteratively do this. So uh, we're going to use a trick uh, that we used in a previous video. Uh, I'll link to that video. It was Moving the Kings, I believe, from a hacker rank contest. If you haven't seen that, check that out here. Uh, but the, the trick we're going to use is going to be able uh, to make our algorithm run without uh, exceeding the time limit. So 
what we want to do is use a trick that's called uh, or we'll, that I'll be referring to um, from here on in future videos is partial sum plus binary search. So uh, the binary search method we'll be using is lower bound. If you're not familiar with that, check this video out here that explains it. And partial sum, I don't have a video for at the moment, but it's simply a video that, or an algorithm that takes a range and uh, outputs a uh, running sum of that range. So uh, here we have one, two, one, two, one, uh, but if we use partial sum on those numbers, we'll end up with one, three, four, six, seven. So uh, the running sum. And so now that we have this running sum, we're able to use a binary search with the arrows so far uh, since the last time we saw Thor. So the way this will work is we'll start off once again just with turn one and three arrows, and then we're going to do our lower bound search and look for three. Uh, or look for the first element that is equal to or greater than three. That's essentially what lower bound does. So we'll find uh, this guy here and we'll know that we can knock off um, both of these warriors. Then we move on to our second turn. We add 10 to our current arrow so far and that's 13. This is gonna be greater than uh, any of the numbers in our sort of running sum vector. So we're gonna kill all of these guys off. And then once again, Thor's gonna come back, smash his hammer, and bring all these guys back to life. So then we reset the arrows so far. So then on turn three, we'll have one. That'll knock off our first warrior. Uh, we go to turn four. At this point, our running sum of arrows is two. We're not gonna find that there, so we'll just output four again. And then if we move to turn five, our running sum will be three. We can find three here. And uh, then we know we can knock this warrior off as well. So. Uh, this enables us to do uh, to sort of skip the iterations through all the warriors and just skip directly to the point where we know we're going to be able to kill off all warriors before that point in time. And then using the lower bound function, we'll be able to get an iterator and then use distance uh, from that iterator to the end of our vector to find out how many warriors are still standing with a small catch if we actually find the exact number that we're looking for. So this is our algorithm, uh, and let's take a look at our code. So here we have uh, just a small function, and we have some comments here explaining what each of the variables names. So we have our uh, our function warrior standing, which takes uh, two uh, vectors of long longs. LL is just a type alias for long long, so we don't have to type it over and over again. And our first uh, vector A is uh, represents the strength of each of the warriors, so that's going to be dimension to n, our first number in our input, and uh, our vector B is going to be the number of arrows. Uh, that are unleashed on each turn. So this will be a size Q. And we enter our function, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create uh, another vector C, which is going to store our running sum. So we'll use this as the output in our partial sum function, and we're going to initialize this to be the size, the same size as our vector of strength. Then we just call partial sum, giving it the range for begin and end of our vector A, and an output iterator to the beginning of C. And this is going to give us our running sum, uh, which we saw in the second part of our visual demonstration. Uh, and so then we move on and we declare a long long D which is going to be equal to the arrows so far and then we have a range based for loop over the arrows in our vector B which is just the number of turns and how many arrows are released uh, on each turn. So at the top of this loop we do a plus equals to the arrows so far our variable D and at this point we check if D is greater than the total sum of all of our uh, strengths, which is gonna be found by just looking at the last element of our partial sum vector, we reset D uh, to zero. Note that we're not doing the modulus because we let all the arrows fly by if uh, we end up killing um, all of the uh, warriors in a turn. We don't then wrap around and start killing people off. Um, Thor doesn't smash his hammer until all the arrows have flying, uh, flown by in a given turn. And so once we've done this, we have our, our value D, and then we make our call to lower bound, uh, passing in the ranges, begin and end uh, from our vector C, and then passing in the value D. And then all we have to do at this point, like I said before, is we use our distance function, which will calculate the distance between the iterator that was returned from our lower bound function and the end of our uh, vector C. And the only catch is that we have to subtract one if we found uh, the value uh, 
uh, D uh, exactly. So if we found one past it, uh, then we don't need to uh, subtract this. But if we found it exactly, that means that uh, we want to uh, reduce the uh, first still standing uh, warrior because he actually got killed with the last arrow that was shot. And that's the only case we need to worry about. And so once we've done this, uh, we have our solution. So the last thing to talk about is the time complexity, and uh, that will be big O of Q log N. Q being the number of turns, and uh, log N being the size of our uh, partial sum vector that we have to do our lower bound call on. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.